Hey, hello everyone, and thanks for joining us for Access City Council. I'm your host, City of Las Vegas Communications Director, David Riggleman. Coming up on this show, Ward 1 residents receive awards to beautify their neighborhoods, and we introduce you to the newest member of the Ward 1 team. Of course, the councilman who represents Ward 1 is Brian Knudsen. He joins me now. Brian, welcome back to the show. How are you? I am wonderful. Thank you for having me. Appreciate <laughs> good, it. Good to have you back. Uh, folks, you can probably see we're socially distanced once again. It's uh, the masks are going back on here in Clark County. And so we're doing our part and sitting far apart again <laughs> and, and wearing our masks when we're not in the studio. So it's um, a it's a tough transition. Yeah, it uh, is. Nobody wants to go back to masks, but that's we where we are right now. Yeah. But uh, the cases uh, speak for themselves. We're going the wrong direction here. So yeah. everybody do your part. Let's put this let's put this to bed and get it, get on with our lives. I so, would like that very yeah, much. Me too, me too. Well, Councilman, you know Ward 1 very well. It's your stomping ground. For those of you out there not exactly sure where Ward 1 is located, well, don't worry, we're gonna show you right here on the map. This is where the city began back in the day. It's where the Springs Preserve is located because those were the natural springs that uh, we're here in the day that that brought everyone here from the from the first Native Americans to uh, the people that settled here later on. But uh, that's kind of the heart of, of Ward 1 and, and the city of Las Vegas. And of course, if you live in this area, or work in this area, then you are in the city limits of the city of Las Vegas. One of the exciting areas, of course, in Ward 1 is the medical district, which we're going to talk more about here later in the show. But uh, it's an exciting place. Uh, a lot I, going I love on. Ward One. Yeah, and uh, a lot happening in the future. It's going to shape the future of the whole city, which yes. we're, which we're going to talk about. Councilman, you were recently on a radio program. You were on KNPR, and you were talking about the rise of Las Vegas as a sports community. Uh, you and I have been here a long time, and I remember when um, Mayor Oscar Goodman was in office. He talked about bringing major league sports here. And people called him a Don Quixote, it'll never happen, he's out chasing windmills. And now we've got the Golden Knights, the Raiders, we've got the Aces, and we may get MLB, Major League Baseball, and, and Major League Soccer as well in the near future. You know, it was interesting, on that show we were talking about the expansion of the, the technology, um, uh, what, do you, what do you call it, the industry, technology mm -hmm. industry. Um, and how Vegas is growing so quickly and we're recruiting all these people from other states to come and set mm -hmm. up shop here, be entrepreneurs. And so in context, we're talking about uh, biomedical infrastructure and technology and how fast we can grow if we can grow. Mm -hmm. And there's some naysayers that say, well, we can't change healthcare. We can't add biomedical mm -hmm. infrastructure that quickly. And I say, yeah, we can. We grew sports really quickly. We did. Because uh, uh, two years ago, there was no Allegiant Stadium. Three years ago, there was no hockey stadium. Exactly. It didn't exist. And so this town can change dramatically fast when it wants to. And Councilman, that is such a good point because you remember when the Knights, they were the first major league team that, that we got here. And people said, oh, people in the desert are never going to support hockey. This is this is the desert. This is uh, This is a place where People don't grow up playing hockey. They're not going to support it. It's been exactly the opposite. Uh, the, the Knights are hugely supported here. And, of course, then once the first domino falls, then the others do. So then the Raiders came, the Aces, and we might get the A's potentially, the Oakland A's, and uh, the, an MLS uh, expansion team. So as we soccer. talk about yeah. the medical district um, and people are, are naysayers about the growth of health care in our community, can we have a children's hospital, for mm -hmm. example? Can we grow biomedical research? Uh, I say, yeah, anything's possible in Las Vegas. That's why it's great to be a Las Vegan, because mm -hmm. if you want to change things, and I desperately want to change healthcare, anything is possible. Yeah. And I look at the, the Allegiant Stadium, I drive by all the time, and I say, anything is possible. Yeah. That's good. It's a good point. Uh, and, and, and I love your enthusiasm on that, because, yeah, what we're looking at here, all these stadiums, uh, all the sports in Las Vegas, the rap was for years that oh we would never you know we, they would never survive because we just don't support sports teams here not the case so. anything is possible here in las vegas exactly i agree i agree councilman it related to the medical district some exciting changes are going to take place along the rancho corridor right well, let's let's talk about that a little bit so if if you live near or work near the the medical district which is right around umc it's going to be rancho and charleston mm -hmm. You're going to see a lot of cones on the Shadow Lane campus. It's right near where the medical school is going up. Um, that's the beginning. Um, it's, it's going to be a bit painful for the next few years because the Rancho Corridor, the Charleston Corridor up to Rancho are all going to be redone. There's going to be 15-foot sidewalks, tree-lined streets. It's going to look like a whole new area yeah, um, in the next three to five years. And so I think it's important that the city council just uh, uh, accepted 
funds uh, for the design work. The construction funding will come in in the next year or so. Mm -hmm. Um, and preparing those residents um, in the neighborhoods around there for a significant amount of construction. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, we're going to have a much better corridor. Um, that, that Charleston Rancho Corridor is one of the most heavily traveled areas. It is. And also, we have the most accidents in that area. And so we're going to redo the, the entire area, large walking paths, which is going to create the opportunity for more housing and development in that area, which I'm really, really excited about. It's something that the medical district desperately needs. So, Councilman, let's give everybody some perspective. So we're talking about basically from Charleston, then as you move north along Rancho. So uh, for Rancho, it's going to be from the 95 all the way to Sahara. Okay, so wow. in the next three years, wow. you're going to see 10 to 15 foot sidewalks, tree lined streets, um, I'm excited about on Oki and Rancho. There's a vacant lot there. That's right. going to be something different, and I'm very excited. We'll talk about that on the next oh, show. Good, good. And then on Charleston, from the 15 up to Rancho, again, 10 to 15 foot sidewalks, tree lined streets. It's going to, we mentioned in the beginning segment that this is the oldest part of Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. It's going to look like the newest part of Las Vegas wow. in the next three years. I'm very excited about it. That, that's great. Well, we'll keep uh, everybody posted on the changes. So Sahara all the way to the 95. Wow, that's... That's, that's, that's a lot of construction. Yeah. 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 If, you, if you live along there, which, which I do, <laughs> I'm a little <laughs> anxious about the cones. Yeah. They, they'll, they'll be cones for a while and then they'll go away. So yeah. it'll, it'll look a lot, a lot not nicer in the next couple of years. You know, we're doing this currently on Las Vegas Boulevard. Big, okay. big improvement there. It's painful. And it, it is painful, but it does eventually come to an end. And we yeah. did that along Main Street and Commerce. Uh, those those yep. uh, those two streets, one uh, they're one ways, each running in opposite directions, obviously. But same thing. That that was a long project, but uh, it's it's awesome now. I look at it as an investment, and I'm proud to say the city is investing in the medical district. We're investing in one of the oldest parts of our community to make it look better. It's a refresh. And it's something that's desperately needed. When, when will it start, Councilman? When will we start to see the, 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 the work really in earnest? Cones are up on Shadow Lane now. Oh. Uh, it'll move to Pinto next, and then it'll go on to Rancho. So given scheduling, it's probably going to be a year and a half, two years away. Okay. But people should expect it. All right. All right. Very good. And then, uh, Councilman, this is really important. Uh, you had posted this on Facebook. You said, I joined Politics Now host John Langler of 8 News Now to talk more about how our city plans on creating housing and shelter for vulnerable Nevadans. And this is really an important topic right now. You and I have been saying that housing prices are skyrocketing right now, which is great if you're selling your home, but if you're trying to buy a home right now, it can be very, very scary. And I think a lot of people are thinking, I I'm never going to be able to get into a house. It's a, it's a complicated thing because our community is growing so fast and we really weren't set up to to accommodate this many people. So in 20, 30 years, we're going to have 300,000 more people into our community. Right now, the home prices are exuberant. I mean, it's hard to find a home right now, let alone be able to pay for it. If you're a Clark County School District teacher making $48,000 a year, you're certainly not going to be able to afford a home here. And so I think as elected officials throughout the state, we have to find avenues and opportunities to create housing options for people. Um, so if you are a, a teacher or a firefighter or you're working at one of the grocery stores, you should have access to, sure. to live comfortably in an environment that, that fits your needs. And so that's what I think we're going to be focusing in on. And in Ward 1, at least, the city of Las Vegas, the state of Nevada, is creating more housing options. That's going to be, uh, that's going to look like single home family residential units. That's going to look like apartment complexes. That's mm -hmm. going to look like high rise towers in some parts of our city. Um, that's going to be happening over the next several years to accommodate the growth. And right now, the city of Las Vegas is short about 50,000 units. Um, that's a lot. It is. That's a lot. a lot. And in the last four years, we've only, we've only put in 1,000. So we're going to have to grow dramatically yeah. um, over the next 10, 15 years. And people should expect that. That's why the projects on Rancho and Charleston are so important, because we're going to have to accommodate that amount of traffic. Well, you hit on such a good point. Any strong economy has people of all income levels. That's what you need uh, to, to thrive. But people who are more moderately paid or even on the lower end of the scale, they've got to have a place to live, too. And it's very, very important that we adjust this because otherwise people are going to be priced out of the market completely. And we want, we want everyone to be happy and having mm -hmm. conditions that are suitable for them. And right. so if, if, you want to, if you want to go to your coffee shop and have someone serve you coffee, if you want someone to teach your, your, your children, yep. If you want to call 911 and have someone respond, you're going to have to create housing options for them. Right, exactly, exactly. It's been an interesting thing. Uh, I think people are saying um, uh, the housing market across the country is seeing this, this boom. There are a few pockets here and there where housing prices haven't rocketed up quite so dramatically, 
But this isn't just happening here in Las Vegas. It's it's a phenomenon we're seeing across the nation right now. So. And I, I don't understand it. <laughs> I don't know if any, I don't, anybody I don't understands either. it. I, I don't either. I, yeah. I, I'm not quite sure. I mean, I've heard people say, well, people from California are selling homes at, at even higher prices and investing here in Nevada or coming here to retire. And then I'm hearing, well, Nevadans are doing the same thing in, in going to places like Utah and Idaho and yeah. driving the prices up there as well. So whatever it is, there's a lot of people coming into Vegas. Yep. My job is to make sure that they have a place to land and they're productive in our community. Yeah, it's, it's very key. And uh, again, um, it's one of those things we've got to get our arms around now because yes. the, the situation is getting uh, getting tougher for people, especially first time home buyers to even, yes. to even get into, in, into a home. Councilman, kind of similar to that, uh, you posted this on Facebook. You said, passed today, Councilman Knudsen successfully worked with Councilwoman Victoria Seaman to pass a citywide ordinance that focuses on neighborhood beautification and homeowner safety. You fill everybody in. This was a, this was a vote that the council took. Um, really, when we're talking about a nuisance complaints and, 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 and abatement of uh, uh, just kind of blight within neighborhoods. Uh, this was pretty controversial for the city council um, and a little bit of drama associated with it. And so if I fully explain it, and it'll be explained uh, more so in the next upcoming council meetings, um, but it's essentially those houses and neighborhoods, they're mostly in wards one, three, and five. Um, they're overgrown with weeds, they're not taken care of. Right. And so the city comes in with code enforcement and cleans it up and places liens on the house. If the owner doesn't pay those liens, those liens just kind of linger. And what happens is you have real estate folks, developer folks, come in and buy the house and they're required to pay those liens as part of the purchase of the right. house. So they fix up the house, they have those liens, and then they come to city council and ask for those liens to be waived. Mm -hmm. um, I was under the impression, um, and I believe, that having a, a more administrative process is healthier for our community. Mm -hmm. And that's, that was a direct request from some of the real estate folks that do that, is they want to know exactly what they're getting into and how much of the liens can be waived. Mm -hmm. So in the program that is being, is being set up right now that the council did approve, is if you're, a, if you're a real estate person and you want to come in and buy one of those houses that have a lot of liens, you're going to come to the city, they're going to say, here's what you need to do in order to get those liens waived. We need you to put in fire safety equipment. We need you to take out all the grass and mm -hmm. put in gravel. We need you to make the house habitable and safe for people to move mm -hmm. into. And at the end of the day, really beautify the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And so they'll be able to have those liens waived administratively without having to worry about politics or going to the city council. They'll know exactly what they're getting into and they can create a business model after that. And so we've been working really close we with our code enforcement team, with our planning folks to say, what, what are those liens that can be waived and how can we make sure that those houses are habitable and r really a part of beautifying a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited about this program. I think over the next couple of years, you'll see a, a, a cottage industry develop going after those homes in our communities yeah. that have liens on them, going in and beautifying them. And then the city has a part in making sure that those developers can make a profit. That's, yeah. that's part of the game. But you know, Councilman, to the point we were, we were making earlier, by having the liens waived, it's going to allow those people who are coming in to develop or, or flip those properties yeah. to sell them at a more reasonable price versus having to just pass those costs on to, to the new buyer. Correct. Uh, which is basically what they would have to do. So it's, that's an important uh, component in all of this. It's exciting when you think about it because this process in the past has been a little nebulous for people who are trying to purchase old properties uh, that, that could be turned into an affordable place or even, or even not, nicer. Uh, but you've got the prohibitive aspect of, of the lien against it, you know. It's exactly it. And for the, for the neighbors that call me about their, their, their neighbors who are, who are not taking care of their properties, this is a path um, to allow for some of those properties to be rehabbed. The city taking a part in it and actually making it easier for someone to, to rehab a house, sell it, make a profit, mm -hmm. but also beautify the neighborhood. Yeah, so. fix up the, the house down there that's just, yes. you know, um, gone to pots, to, to use the phrase. We saw that a lot during the recession. Yes. People uh, were upside down. Uh, they were foreclosed on, walked away from their homes and they just languished. And we had neighborhoods across the city where we had water left in the pools that turned green and we had mosquitoes and weeds and... Um, you remember back in 2008, it feels a lot like it does now where mm -hmm. there's had this huge housing bubble and then it just burst. Mm -hmm. And we, the city had all of these homes that were being foreclosed on, yeah. horrible conditions. And so I think this is a really a, a preventative, a reactive measure, but also proactive 
that if something were to change in our economy in the yeah. next several years, we have a system set up where we can hopefully mitigate some of those, those yeah. issues. It's going to be easier to see those houses yeah. uh, get taken over by somebody who's going to fix them up. And, and take care and, of them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And Councilman, speaking of uh, keeping your neighborhood looking good, uh, you tweeted this out. You said, congratulations to the El Camino Community Association, Glen Heather Estates, Rainbow Family Park Neighborhood Association, and the Spanish Oaks community on receiving an award to improve your neighborhood. So tell everybody about this. This is exciting. So Ward 1 always has the most applicants and the most awards uh, given by the Neighborhood Partners Fund Board. Mm -hmm. Carl Catarata from my office sits on that board and Matt Tramp is a representative mm -hmm. of Ward 1 on that board. Um, and I'm always proud of the Ward 1 Neighborhood Associations. It's a lot of work to do those applications. I've done a few myself before I was in office. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, and they're, they're a lot of work. And so for the neighborhood associations that put in the time and the effort, um, the people are giving of their time, treasure, and talent, and they're matching that with what the city does. Mm -hmm. It's really an awesome program that the city has. And for those neighborhoods that, that won, that competed, and, and were awarded funds, I'm really proud that they're in Ward 1. Yeah, it's, it's exciting stuff, folks. Uh, basically, if you and the folks in your neighborhood are willing to put some elbow grease into working on the neighborhood, the city will match funds uh, to help you get the project going. We've seen a little bit of everything, art projects, um, landscape projects, it's been, it's been, it just runs the gamut of things that people uh, w will do to improve their neighborhood. It's a great way to bring your neighbors together. For mm -hmm. everything that I do, that it, it's all about connecting with people. Mm -hmm. So the more you can connect with your neighbors, the easier life is. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And uh, the better your neighborhood's going to look, that's, too. That's it. <laughs> so that's, that's the idea at the end of the day. And then, Councilman, you know, one of the mainstays uh, in Ward 1 in the city in general is the Mirabelli Community Center right there near 95 in Jones. And uh, you recently paid a visit out there to, uh, to the TOT camp. Every year they do a competition. Uh, and so w the extra points for that TOT camp was for a councilman to, to pop out of a little spaceship. <laughs> so it's super fun for me. I, I, everyone knows now I have a five-year-old and three-year-old and m most times I'd rather be around children than adults. And so <laughs> it was fun for me to pop out of a spaceship and uh, get to hang out with all the kids for a little bit. And, there's really great staff at Mirabelli. The the parents that send their kids there, I know, love it. Priscilla, oh, Priscilla Scott over there does a really mm -hmm. great job. Um, so I'm really proud that, that that's in Ward 1. And uh, anytime anybody invites me to be around children, I'm going to choose that over everything yeah. else. You know, that's it's a great facility. Um, gosh, my kids uh, participated at Mirabelli. Um, there's the, uh, the uh, Mirabelli Maniacs. It's yep. a cheerleading uh, dance competition team that always wins national awards. And, uh, we have some pre-K programming yeah, going on now. Yeah. We have some gymnastics going on. Yeah, it's a little of everything, little for, of all, everything. for all age groups. They so. do a really great yeah. job, yeah. yeah. And the community center, I mean, the uh, senior center is right next to us. Liburn is yeah. right next to yeah. So yeah. we go there monthly and, and yeah. talk, talk to all the seniors. Yeah, it's good stuff. So we, we're taking care of everybody, regardless of your age. So, Well, Councilman, we need to take a short break. But when we return, learn how Ward 1 is working to reach the Latino community. That's next, so please stay with us. If you've been affected by suicide, you're not alone. Suicide is a leading cause of death that affects millions each year. In most cases, it happens when stressful life events overload the coping abilities of someone suffering from a mental health condition. And the most common condition associated with suicide is depression, an illness that goes undiagnosed or untreated far too often. But the research is clear. Suicide is preventable if we work together. The American Foundation for Suicide Prevention has set a bold goal to reduce the annual suicide rate 20% by 2025. We can save tens of thousands of lives, but we need the help of everyday heroes like you. People have suffered in silence for too long, and too many families have had to weather their losses alone. You can change that. We need you to be the voice for suicide prevention, and it can be as simple as reaching out to a friend, because talk saves lives. If you're having thoughts of suicide, or if you're concerned about someone else, assume you are the only one who will reach out. You can also join hundreds of thousands across the country for our Out of the Darkness community walks and raise awareness of suicide within your community. Together, we'll bring hope to those affected by suicide and raise awareness to save lives. Learn how you can fight suicide. Visit AFSP.org today. I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with turtle is a perfect 
day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. 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 I'll be seeing you. You know, the, uh, the thing I've missed the most um, during this entire time, this pandemic, has been you. I love playing to a live audience. There's nothing like it. The COVID-19 vaccines are going to help us all get back to the moments we miss. It's totally normal to have questions. I did too. That's why it's so important to get informed. So ask your doctor and get the facts. It's up to you. Welcome back everyone. Ward One has a new member of the team and we want to introduce her to you right now. Maria Trevino joins us. And Maria, thank you so much for being here. Uh, welcome to the program. Councilman, I know you're very excited because Maria offers uh, a component to the office that you've not really had in the past, right? That's right. So Ward One is comprised of about 40% uh, Latinos. Uh, and I, I, I feel terrible about it two years into my, off, into my term a handful of people who, who speak Spanish have reached out to me, and I, I just don't feel right about that. So we're gonna do our very best, and, and Maria's gonna spearhead this effort to go knocking on doors, go to grocery stores, and see if we can engage the Latino community so that they know that I'm, I'm representing them. Uh, and if they have issues or concerns or complaints, they know who to call, and Maria is, is gonna be great at it. I'm really excited about that. That's very good. Maria, thanks so much for being here. We love to be able to put uh, names with faces so when people contact the Ward 1 office, they're going to know that, uh, hey, you're going to be one of the people that they can communicate with, especially if they're a Spanish speaker, right? That's right, yes. That's very good. Well, tell us a little about yourself, Maria. Uh, are, you, are you from Las Vegas? Uh, tell us about yourself and, uh, and um, you know, how the transition to, to City Hall has been so far. Well, I am from Mexico. I came to Las Vegas in 2016. And since then, uh, City of Las Vegas has welcomed me with so much love. And that's why I decided to, you know, put a little bit of effort and start working for County Milkenuton. I completely love my job. And I just want to make, well, keep Las Vegas great for everyone. Just like it welcomed me, I, want, I wanted to welcome everybody here. That's, brings, that's a really good point that you bring up. Councilman made the point, Maria, that a lot of people within the ward are hesitant to reach out uh, if they're from the Latino community. Is it primarily, do you think, because of a language barrier? Or what, what are your thoughts on that? Why do you think um, people within the Latino community have been maybe hesitant to, to reach out to the city? I think it is the language barrier because when people come to in United States, you know, generally, um, they believe that they cannot reach out to others, to you non know, the government or to the police, to firefighters, because there's just an issue with that. So what I want, I want to make a change here. I want people to feel hurt. I want people to know that I'm here for them and just go from there. Uh, baby steps for everything. So whoever needs my help, I'm right here. Okay, very good. And again, we love to, again, put names with faces. You've got uh, Dorian Stonebarger in your office, office Carl Catarata, and now uh, Maria Trevino. And it's a great crew, Councilman. You've got a really good group of people, very responsive, very committed, and, and really very passionate about serving the community. Uh, and I think as you are. Yeah, and that's really important to me. So, so Maria, uh, I've learned a lot about the Mexican uh, government from Maria, so talking about her experience living in Mexico, and governments just operated very differently. So those folks here in Nevada, in Ward 1, may not understand what code enforcement is. They may not understand how the city can engage in beautifying a neighborhood, for mm -hmm. example. And so that's, that's my primary objective, uh, working with Maria, is helping those in Ward 1 understand that we're a resource for them. Mm -hmm. Just like everybody else in Ward 1, in the city, in the state, um, but the government is here to support them and make sure their neighborhood is beautiful, make sure they're getting the response they need. Um, and just, just like Maria has a skill set to offer, Dorian is, is getting a PhD in, in public policy, but focusing in on housing. That's mm -hmm. why I can talk about housing is because Dorian talks about housing all the time. She knows it. And Carl understands communications really uh -huh. well. So what's really important to my constituents is that I have a strong social media presence. While I may not be great at social media, Carl's an amazing at it. So each of them have a specific skill set and talent, and I have my own skill sets. And so uh, we come together and work really well together, and I can 
we can all do our separate things and be just as effective for Ward 1. Yeah, and I think clearly the, the message uh, for Maria, for Dorian, for Carl is that, uh, and from you obviously yourself, is that you are here and you're ready to serve the community. That's so. it. Uh, Maria, I, another question for you, and we'll have this before the end of the show. We'll tell the viewers out there how to get in touch with your office uh, if need be. But what are some things, if people do have an issue, what would you, be your message to them? They, they, they really should reach out and, and, and let us know, right? That's right. Uh, first thing, you can email us to work one at lasvegasnevada.gov. Or you can call us directly. Um, my phone number is 702-229-2299. You can call us, email us, whatever way to communication for you is better. Just let us know what you need because we're here for you. We're here to make, well, to keep Las Vegas the best city possible. So. And Maria, language, uh, Spanish, uh, they shouldn't worry if, if, if uh, they don't. Uh have a good mastery of English, um, no, no worries, because you'll be able to communicate with them in Spanish, right? That's correct. Yeah, yes. very good, and make everybody feel connected and comfortable and, um, and, heard, I like, and heard from. That's right, I like it when people text me, because it makes it easier, because I can jump in. So a lot of the constituents <laughs> throughout the ward, because uh, my number is out there pretty it publicly. Is, it is, So it's a lot easier for me when they text me, because I'm usually in some meeting or something like that, mm. and I can't pick up the phone, so they text me, and then I can immediately start asking the city, and the city's amazing and wonderful. Um, the city staff jump right to it when we're, we're kind of texting yeah. back and forth. So yeah. there's all different ways to communicate with us, uh, and now we have another language to, that we can communicate with as well. That's great. And uh, Councilman, I think you have a, 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 well, you had a huge advantage coming into office having been a staffer uh, in the past. You know who does what. So folks, if, if you're a Ward 1 resident and you're contacting Councilman Knudsen's office, they're very good at figuring out oh, that, that that can be taken care of by this department or that person or, yeah. or whatever and then getting it taken care of. So. Well, Maria, thank you so much for being on the program. We really enjoyed talking with you and I hope that you have a great career here at the City of Las Vegas. You're gonna perform a valuable service, no question. And uh, it, again, it's, it's gonna fill a void that, that we've really not been able to fill very easily uh, until you got here. So good luck to you and uh, buena suerte. <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank so much. You're very welcome. And Councilman, always a pleasure having you on the program. Uh, we'll you, have dude. you back here in six weeks with another update from from Ward 1. It's exciting. There's a lot going on out there that uh, we'll give everybody another update on the whole Rancho Corridor. Uh, For the next three years, facelift. David, yeah. that's what we're going to be talking yeah. about. Yeah, it's going to be Medical cool. district. Yeah, it's going to be great. And uh, so in the meantime, uh, folks, we always want to hear from you out there. So if there's something you'd like to share with Councilman Knudsen or Maria or Dorian or Carl, uh, you can always follow him on Facebook and Twitter. Councilman is very, very active. You can also contact the office. We still use phones around here, as Maria mentioned, 702. <laughs> 229-6405, or you can send an email. The councilman's email is bknudson at lasvegasnevada.gov. And like I say, he or Maria or Dorian or Carl, uh, one of them will get right back to you and take care of uh, whatever you have, uh, whatever issue you have in Ward 1. So again, Councilman, great job. Maria, great job. And uh, I want to tell everybody out there, hey, don't miss our next show beginning on August 12th with Ward 3 City Councilwoman Olivia Diaz. You can now catch all of our KCLV shows on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. And don't forget, you can watch us live on the internet at kclv.tv. Thank you again for joining us, everyone. We'll see you next time around.